Good morning, everyone. Good morning. What a December and death missionary disciples in family. Today we celebrate the fifth Sunday of Lent. And as we start the celebration, we say hi. We invite to your neighbor. Good morning. We ask that you also please wear your mask and maintain social distancing at all times. As well as also silence your phone and prepare your heart to celebrate the sacred liturgy. Our Sunday readings where this is, is the real gifts serve us also be giving thanks and praise to God. Please step and sing the Sila Catholic song. Our celebrant is Father John Peter. Of this uh, pandemic, 
We also remember the faithful departed, Ivan Dimas and Rachel Potter. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judea. It will not be like the covenant I made with their fathers the day I took them by the hand to lead them forth from the land of Egypt. For they broke my covenant, and I had to show myself their master, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will place my law within them and write it upon their hearts. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer will they have me to teach their friends and relatives how to know the Lord. All from least to greatest shall know me, says the Lord, for I will forgive their evil doing and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. without with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death and he was hurt because of his reverence son though he was he learned obedience from what he suffered and when he was made perfect he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him the word of the lord Thanks be to God. Praise to 
be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Some Greeks who had come to worship at Passover feast came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida, Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we would love to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But it, if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it. And whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it, preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, there also my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. I am troubled now. Yet, what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. But it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd there heard it and said it was thunder. But others said an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, This voice did not come for my sake, but for yours. Now is the time of judgment on this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. He said this, indicating the kind of death he would die. Sisters and brothers, the Gospel of the Lord. I want to thank and welcome all of you for joining today's celebration along with the Missionary Discipleship family here in Bernadette. As we are coming closer to the Holy Week, this next week we begin the Palm Sunday. And as you can see, the life of Jesus coming closer, the death that he's gonna face, the cross that he's gonna carry, and all the trials and the judgment that is gonna be coming soon. And Jesus bringing that to the attention of his own disciples. And so as people of God, it is your turn and my turn to listen to the voice of God. And Jesus says, I am troubled now. It's unlike of Jesus. But today, as a human, as a divine person, who wants to be transparent with the people, who wanted to say that what he is going through right now, I am troubled now. What should I say? And the Gospel says, Philip and Andrew bring a news to Jesus about people who came from Greek. They came to visit him. They communicated something from the people who came to visit Jesus, want to visit Jesus, but Jesus seemed not to answer, completely ignore, is going with this agenda. He's already started talking about, I'm troubled. I'm troubled, the hour is coming, what should I say? But he goes forward saying, the hour has come, I'm here to glorify the Lord. And he prays to God, Lord God, glorify, glorify me in this time. And then the voice came from the cloud, I have glorified you and I will glorify you again. 
Each word in John's gospel is so important. It brings forth so much meaning um, about the life of Jesus, about the glory of Jesus, and even the glory after the death of Jesus. It reminds so much about the people of God, about the love of God, about the endless mercy of God, and the fearless leader that is Christ himself, who was ready and willing to face all challenges. Although he says today, I'm troubled, but that doesn't mean nothing can stop him. But God, I'm here to do God, your will, that your will be done. But one thing I want to do, I want to gather all my people to myself. Jesus said it at the very beginning, and he does it again. That's what we heard last week. God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, that anyone who believes in him shall not be perished, but have eternal life. Again, in this time, although he's troubled, he's thinking about how can I save my people? How can I bring my people together? That's that's um, that's something outstanding when we meditate about the life of Jesus, how he was caring about the people of God. His mission is to save the people, nothing else. And we read from Prophet Jeremiah. We all know Prophet Jeremiah is known for his lamentation, but today he has got something special to say. The Lord is speaking because Prophet Jeremiah prophesied God's words, but people did not, was not ready to listen to those words. And so there was a conflict between Jeremiah and the people of God. You know what happens when you declare or announce something that your crowd is not ready to listen? Maybe a stone or, you know, whatever. That's what happened to Jeremiah. But he wasn't afraid. Guys, I know you don't like to hear this, but this is the voice of God. I'm here to proclaim. Listen to the voice of God. God is ready and willing to make a new covenant with you. And this is not going to be the covenant that the Lord made years ago with the people of Israel in the desert. This is something the Lord is not going to give you in the stone, but He's going to create in your heart. A covenant that the Lord wants to create within the hearts of the people for which we need to be ready to do God's will more than what we want, what our will is. And it is challenging, but Jeremiah did it. Even though his own people didn't want to listen, he had to live whatever he was comfortable with, he wanted to go with the Lord. That's exactly St. Paul is reminding him about how Jesus, being the Son of God, was obedient, doing God's will. He didn't want to pursue whatever he wanted to do, whatever he was comfortable in doing, but he wanted to do God's will. And that's how God glorified the Son of God, Jesus. Sisters and brothers, I'm talking about doing God's will and doing the right thing. Both of them are great, but is it easy? It is not so easy. It does take away our comfort zone. For many of you have been engaged in business, you know, even school teachers, nurses, and even children. Sometimes when you have to face the challenge, you have to give up your comfort zone. Like, I feel shy, I don't want to face him. No, I'm going to face him right now. This business is really a huge task. I'm not ready to do that. Well, you have been blessed. You have to face the challenge. Spiritual life is also like that. It does not come handy. We have to face the reality. We have to rise above. We have to rise above. We got to do something about our life in order to bring that greater glory that the Lord has prepared for you and me. Because the goodness of God is within us unless we acknowledge, acknowledge uh, uh, unless we step up and do it, manifest it, God's goodness will not come out. And so today, I want to encourage all of us to pray to God to give us the strength 
as Jesus prayed, I am troubled, O God. I'm troubled about the situation that's happening in my family, in my business, in our country these days. I'm troubled. But how am I giving up my comfort zone and make the good happen? How am I giving up my comfort zone to make my family happy? That's one of the key elements that I would love for all of us to take home. It is not easy. It is tough. It is difficult. However, as Jesus decided to do God's will, Lord God, let your glory be done. That's what you and I are called to do at this hour. A little story because I see some children here in the First World War. You know, um, a friend saw his own uh, friend being shot and just fallen into the ground. In the evening, everybody rushed to their camp, but this friend who saw his own friend falling into the ground, he could not sleep. So he rushed to the lieutenant colonel's room and knocked and said, I need to go back to the battlefield and bring my friend back. I saw it with, the, with one, my own eyes. The colonel said, My friend, you got a big heart. And I want to tell you, it's not worth it. But if you want to go, do it. So this uh, soldier just gathered all his courage, went to the battlefield, he reached to the exact place where his friend followed. He saw him. Lifted him up, brought him back. The next day, the lieutenant colonel and everybody just, you know, came to pay, pay their respect for the fallen soldier. And then the lieutenant colonel looked at the friend who brought him back, kindly said, I was great of you, but I told you it's not worth it. It's not worth it. That's up. This time, the soldier got up, looked at the face of the lieutenant and said, Sir, what do you mean you say it's not worth it? When I lived there, my friend was still alive. And he looked at me and said, Jim, I knew you would come for me. That was the last word that he spoke. And he died. He died with that comfort that there was someone who was looking for him. Sisters and brothers, we all face so much challenge in our life. As mother, as father, as grandpa, as grandma, as teenagers, all of us are facing challenges. How do we do the right way to do the right thing that we might be able to do God's will, that we might put others first? In this time, the Lord is inviting us. Maybe what are some of your comforts on that you are just bust yourself in the closet. You don't want anybody to take that away from you. That is blocking the good of the other. That is blocking the happiness of the other. Maybe let's pray that the Lord may bless us with this gift that we are ready and willing to give up our comfort zone, to bring happiness, to bring peace, to bring harmony in the life of our loved ones and our community. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we continue to make progress in our Bishop Ministry appeal, we are 30% of our overall goal. And uh, I have been um, you know, inviting different uh, people, ministers, to help us to understand the importance and the significance of every one of us stepping up to uh, bring life Bernadette and also like to the diocese and today I'm um, lucky to have Kim Fuentes who is our parish resource representative of the diocese and she has served in the diocese in many capacities you know family um, life ministry and uh, pro-life ministry and um, today she's here with us to share representing the diocese of Stockton. Please welcome Kim. Inviting me today. My name is Kim Fuentes. As, as you said, I've worked at the diocese for 21 years, the past two years as the diocesan resource representative. 
representing and, and championing the As One vision. I've been invited today to talk about the Bishop's Ministry Appeal of the BMA and some of the diocesan ministries supported by your generous donations. The Bishop's Ministry Appeal is coordinated by the Diocesan Development Office, so they produce all of the promotional materials you see on the table as you're coming in, they train your parish volunteers, process the payments and thank yous, all of that administrative stuff is done at the diocesan level. Every year, a diocesan goal is set for each parish throughout the diocese um, based on a variety of factors. And 100% of the money that comes in to a parish beyond that goal comes back to the parish to support their ministries and special projects. This year, Father John Peter shared that you know, in, in addition to supporting your vibrant ministries here in your parish, they hope to be able to improve their me the media ministry here um, with money that comes back to the parish. So that's, that's a little overview of the, the Bishop's Ministry Appeal. So I'm going to share just a couple of ways that pastoral center ministries have responded in this pandemic year. It was hard for me to select just a couple because so much has been done and so many offices have responded um, over this year. There's a three-page list on the diocesan webpage if you want more information, but I'm just going to select a few. It's important for you to know that all diocesan ministries continue during this challenging year. Bishop Cotto was very clear with our staff early in the pandemic that nothing is to stop. You may look different, we need to be creative, but while church buildings can close, the church never closes. So communication was a huge issue and a huge challenge. We entered the pandemic without a coordinator of communication because he had resigned. And so our chancellor and our worship director, our human resources director and others, worked tirelessly to, to gather guidance and, and information that was coming out regarding health and safety issues and liturgy issues. Health and safety issues were coming from county, state, and, and federal agencies, and oftentimes it was conflicting. And remember, our diocese has six counties, so it wasn't just working with one county, but with six counties with very different COVID realities. And we needed to, you know, gather information, not just on how to hold public worship, but as well as, you know, employment issues affecting all parish staffs. So it was a big job to, to bring this information together in a way that helped pastors and parishes respond and know what they can and can't do and how to, how to do things. Liturgy guidance was coming from the California Catholic Conference, from the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops in Washington, and even from our own. And, and you know, just as soon as they would get a, a document or some guidance out, something would change. And, and you know how confusing, especially those early days were. And, and responding to that was, you know, everybody trying to learn how to work from home, plus get that information and, and get it out in a timely manner. Our Hispanic and migrant ministries worked with Catholic charities and other community groups to channel information about the virus and available services to the most vulnerable communities. You know, when you have that language barrier, you know, we, at least I know I was confused and I, I was getting all this conflicting information as a person, you know, listening to the news and different sources, helping to get that information to a community that doesn't speak English was, was really a challenge. Um, the offices participated in, in meetings with community groups and government agencies to try to come up with strategies and ways to reduce the COVID-19 in the Hispanic community. In March 2020, there were seven candidates, seven men that were um, entering the final phases of, of their diaconate formation, heading towards ordination. And it would have been easy to have you know, postponed it at that point, postponed that, that final phase and, and wait till things were better. But following Bishop Cotta's directive that nothing stops, Sister Wanda Billion, um, the Director of Diaconate Formation, held classes and even the canonically required five-day retreat via Zoom. So she made it happen. And in September of 2020, those seven men were ordained to the permanent diaconate 
serving our diocese, serving the people of God here. I'm very proud of the way the pastoral center and parishes have responded during this pandemic. But none of this work would be possible without the generosity of people in this parish and throughout the diocese. The work of the pastoral center, while it's vitally important and keeps our church acting as one and functioning as one and, and is, a, is a team, we, we work together. But the work that goes on at the pastoral center is, can sometimes be invisible to the person in the pew. You know, it's, we work with the leaders and the pastors and the priests, so sometimes you can't see what it is we're doing at that diocesan level. But it's the people who contribute anyway that allow us to continue our important work. In closing, I want to thank all of you who have donated to the Bishop's Ministry Appeal, both this year and in the past. And for those of you who are on the fence, I encourage you to prayerfully consider, even if you can't afford the $400 per family that's, that's encouraged, donate something. Join us as we move forward in gratitude and hope, together as one. Thank you, Kim, for your beautiful words and the encouragement for us. Um, our community has been always very generous, but this year I would love for more um, increase the number of participation. Um, we have no problem reaching goals, but having all of the family members being part of this is so important. I, as a pastor, don't prepare my homily. Okay, I'm going to target just this group of people. I'm going to focus only this. I'm preparing for everybody and call to serve everyone. I don't know something is happening with the BMA. 700 families are not. Boom. So I would love for all of us to step up and then contribute to this BMA so we can continue to build together. Thank you so much. Please stand. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten the Son of God, Father and Father, and Father of all of Jesus, God for God, God for God, God for God, true God, true God, we have in our name, the first of the Son of the Father, through him all things are being. and the baptized faithful. May they radiate the joy and life of the 
gospel in their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all families, may they be reflections of God's love. For the, for the human family, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the end of the COVID-19 pandemic, the sick and the hungry, may they experience the tender and loving compassion of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For harmony, peace in our country, that every race, color, and all, tradition, all traditions see in each other the face of Christ. Pray to the Lord. Pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the dearly departed, especially for Ivan Demas and Rachel Ortega, for whom this Mass is offered, may the good Lord grant them mercy, forgiveness, and full blessings in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Let's pray in the silence of our heart for our personal needs. Loving God, we bless and thank you for your grace of mercy that you pour out upon us right at this moment, especially for listening to the cry and the petitions that we have outspoken and all that we hold in our hearts. May the God of mercy who knows our needs even before we ask, grant unto them according to divine will. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you. Through the wine work of human hand, it will become for us a spiritual gift. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The Lord sacrifice and joy. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teaching of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to rather hold to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end, we are claimed. Oh, 
understand. At the Savior's command and follow your divine teaching, together we pray. Our Heart Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass us against us. And lead us in our heart to the day. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distrust, as we are waiting the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said your apostle, peace, I leave you. My peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and purity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite me whole and unite my whole self wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Bless the Lord, your people. Long for the gift of your mercy. And grant that what you, at your prompting they may desire. They may receive by your generous gift. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I want to thank all of you for helping us celebrate St. Joseph and the consecration. It was a huge success. Church was filled with uh, so much people, and uh, um, Monsignor John Armistead did a great job, and we had opportunity for reconciliation and adoration, and um, uh, I thought everybody got something. We sent everybody with the uh, St. Joseph's Capital. Um, it's a beautiful opportunity for us to honor our spiritual father and the spiritual mother, Blessed Mother Mary. So thank you for all your support and your love. And um, I just want to remind you about the Stations of the Cross. This Friday will be at 5.30 p.m. And the pop prayer will be at 3 o'clock. And the next Friday, our Stations will start. It's a good Friday. Um, it will be 12.15 p.m. The Holy Week schedule, um, we, we have put them in the website in the and you will also get your emails if you're in the list and look up through the Facebook and the, and the media. The Lord be with you. The Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in the love of Christ to be merciful like the Heavenly Father. Thank Yes, I'm not going